Hi guys, um, it's Justin here. So today we'll be answering questions 14 and 15 from the Acer Red Paper. Alright, so question 14. Um, you might have been confused by the last, in the second paragraph, the last sentence. So, because an electrolyte releases more ions in solution than indicated by the mole's concentration, a solution of an electrolyte has a more pronounced effect on the freezing point than a solution of a molecular compound of, at the same concentration. So, um, first thing says it's important to understand what we're actually talking about here, um, in terms of freezing point depression. So, um, basically, um, the presence of solute particles in a solvent will lower its freezing point. So that is, if we have a solution, um, a solution of water, the more solute particles we have in it, um, so the more, yeah, just stuff other than water floating around in the water, the more stuff we have, the more solute particles we have, the more we can, we, the more we depress the freezing point. So the lower the freezing point of this solution will be. So um, that's described by this formula here. Change in TF is equal to KF times M. So change in TF is the amount of freezing point depression. So the amount we're lowering that freezing point. Um, and M is the molality. So the number of uh, moles per liter of solute particles in that solution. Um, in this case, it's just basically the amount of stuff we have in the solution. So the amount of non-water stuff, the amount of particles that we have in the solution. That's what the molality is. And KF is just a random constant. Um, all right, so how does this um, all relate to the electrolyte? Um, so we know that if we increase the molality, so the number of particles in solution, the freezing point depression will increase. Um, so that last sentence, uh, because an electrolyte releases more ions in solution than indicated by the molar concentration, a solution of electrolyte has a more pronounced effect on the freezing point than a solution of molecular compound, non-electrolyte molecular compound at the same concentration. Um, so an electrolyte will have a more pronounced effect on the freezing point depression than a non-electrolyte. And the reason for that is because an electrolyte, a property of an electrolyte is that it will dissociate into its individual component ions when dissolved. So when a electrolyte such as um, sodium chloride is introduced into water, it'll split into its individual ions, meaning that we get more particles in water than out. So what this means is that theoretically, even though um, we might have, say, the same concentration of electrolyte and non-electrolyte out of, out of water, um, once we introduce the electrolyte into water, the electrolyte is always going to have a greater concentration of individual ions in the water because of this property of dissociation than a non-electrolyte solution, which won't be splitting up. Um, okay, so how does this relate to question 14? Um, so in question 14, uh, we have two benzoic acid molecules in benzene, and um, when they're introduced into benzene, what happens is they form these dimers, uh, which are held together by a hydrogen bond. So um, as, as shown in that little figure there, and what this essentially creates is a single molecule. So we've gone from two individual benzoic acid molecules, so two individual molecules, to one single combined molecule. So um, where before the electrolyte um, is dissociating into more, elect uh, more sorry, um, particles when it enters the f uh, liquid, in this case, um, benzoic acid is actually um, combining into less particles. So basically, in the case of this benzoic acid molecule, we're going to have half the particles in solution than we'd normally expect. So that means that our freezing point depression will therefore be half the value, um, the theoretical value that we'd come to expect. So because the real value is going to be half the theoretical value, um, the correct answer is A. All right, question 15. Um, so first things first, uh, important to know a couple of facts before we answer the question. Uh, one thing is that one gram of water is equal to one mil of water. So um, we can say therefore, because the question stem has told us that we have a thousand grams of water, we can say that we have um, a thousand mils of water and therefore one liter of water. Um, all right. So, uh, first things first, start with the um, basic equation, change in TF is equal to KF times M. So the freezing point depression is equal to the constant times the molar concentration. Um, so just subbing in values, we get 0.4 is equal to 1.86 times the molar concentration. Um, okay, uh, and from there, we can say that um, because um, when 
uh, the formula to find the molar concentration is m is equal to n on v um, where n is the number of moles and v is the volume um, and because we found from before that the volume is one liter we can say that um, the molar concentration is just going to be equal to the number of moles so m is equal to n so we get this 0.4 is equal to 1.86 times n um, from there we also know that um, the number of moles is equal to the mass um, divided by the molecular weight. Um, so therefore, because we know the mass of um, non-electrolyte solute is 40 grams, we can say that um, N is equal to 40 on M, the molecular weight. So um, if we sub in N, um, we get um, 0.4 um, on 1.86 is equal to 40 on M. All right. Um, so from there, from this step, um, we can um, change this side to state, um, to state that uh, 40 on 186 is equal to 40 on M because 0.4 um, on 186 is equal to uh, 40 on 186 because if you times both the um, numerator and denominator by 100, um, you'll get that. So therefore, as 40 uh, 186 is equal to 40 on M, we can therefore say that M is equal to 186 and therefore that the answer is D for 15.